When we were working with the GUIs, we learned how we could make the program interact with the user by dealing with the clicking of buttons or selecting things on lists or tables. A lot of that happened either by registering handlers for on action or setting code that happened for the on change of a property. As soon as we go to, to GUIs or to, to the graphics, we want to be able to interact directly with the keyboard and the mouse because we don't have things like a button that has an action associated with it. Now we actually need to figure out what's happening directly with the mouse and the keyboard. And so in this video we're going to talk about how we can take keyboard and mouse input. So I've copied our template over to a key mouse input. It turns out that we're going to need some things from another package here. And that is scalafx.scene.input. So the input package, if we look at the API, the there's image input has a number of different events in it. We're going to be using things like the key event and the mouse event so that we can uh, get information about what it is that the user has done. And the interesting thing is that all of these methods that we're looking at are actually defined kind of at the very top of the hierarchy for stuff that we can put inside of our scenes. They are defined on the node. We have a bunch of different methods that work with either things for the mouse or for the keyboard. And so as well as, it turns out there, there are a number of these that work with touch interface. And since the computer I'm making these videos on doesn't have a touch interface, I'm not going to be demonstrating to you how we can deal with the touch interface. We're going to uh, limit ourselves to just dealing with the mouse, things like on mouse clicked, and the keyboard, such as on key pressed. Uh, okay, so we'll close that for a second. Insert. So the application that I want to write here is I want to allow the user to control a shape that moves around. We'll make it a circle. Uh, circle move. We're going to move the circle around with the arrow keys. And what do we want to do with the mouse? I'm going to make it so that the mouse can draw little boxes in the scene. And that and those boxes will be represented by rectangles. And the circle, we want to make it so that it can't move through those boxes. So we're going to kind of take this in steps. The first thing that I want to do is I want to make it so that the key presses move a circle around. Well, I need a circle. It's a new circle. And I'm going to put it at 20, 20 with a size of 10. Content equals. Well, actually, right now, it will just be the circle. OK. Let's see if that looks the way that we want it. Oh, constructor for circle up. Oh, I need to, most of the shapes do not use a new. Okay, there we go, I have a little circle. Uh, maybe that's too small, I don't know. Um, I'll, we'll deal with it. So I want to, register a uh, an event handler for key pressed. Now it turns out there are three main handlers for keys. There's an on key pressed, an on key released, and an on key typed. The key pressed and the key released will work for basically any key that's on your keyboard. And the on key pressed will get called when a key goes down. The on key released will get called when a key goes up. Turns out keyboards have a certain repeat rate, so there that will 
do things that you might not have been expected. You'll actually get multiple key presses for the key going down once. There is also a key typed, and the key typed is a little bit different. It only works for kind of standard character keys, things that would uh, show up when you're typing text. So for example, I want to use the arrow keys to move this around. I can't use key type for that. I have to use key pressed. So the key pressed handler takes an event that is of type key event, which shouldn't be too surprising, and we can make it so that stuff happens inside of here. Well, depending upon what buttons were pressed, I want different things to, to happen. So we need to check to find out what button was pressed. Well, it turns out this key event, if we look in the API and we go back down to the input package, the key event has inside of it a thing called a code, which relates to these key codes here. And you'll see that there are constants defined for all types of different key codes that you might want, including for us things like left for the uh, left arrow key. So I want to see if the ease code, the events code, is equal to key code dot up. If it is, well then I should move the circle up, which means that I want the circles dot uh, center y to be equal to the circle dot center y dot value. So because this is a, uh, the center y is a property, so I can either use apply or value to get its value out. And then I need to subtract something from it if I want it to move up. We'll move two pixels at a time. I'm gonna copy that line three times. So we have up, we're gonna have down. And I do remember looking in the API and right now, these are all caps. This is something that will hopefully change in the fairly near future. For moving down, we should add two to the Y. And for left and right, we should change X. Left moves, subtracts two. Right adds two. And if we run this, so now, when I use the arrow keys, whoa, that was interesting. I hit the, hitting the right key does something very different as does hitting the left key. Up and down are doing exactly what I was expecting to. Oh, that would do it. I didn't change the X's here, <laughs> which means they get attached to the Y value. So you jump real fast. Okay, now let's, Look at this again, left, right, down, up. One challenge with doing it this way is I can't move diagonally. So I'm holding left. If I hit down, I start moving just down, but I can't move diagonally. We'll be able to overcome that when we learn how to do animations in, in a few videos. But for now, we have made it so that our circle moves. We have seen how we can handle the keyboard input to make changes in here. We'll come back and we'll do the stuff that we want to do with the mouse and then kind of make all the pieces work together in another video.